The use of thresholds as a liminal space for characters is not a new trope in film. It has been used throughout history in films like The Searchers, Rear Window, 12 Years a Slave, and Norma Ray. In each of these films, the act of crossing the threshold signifies a significant choice made by the character in question. In The Searchers, Ethan favors the Wild West over society, which sets him apart from the characters who enter the house. In Rear Window, Lisa performs willingly for Jeffries by entering a dangerous space in which she could be killed. In 12 Years a Slave, Solomon enlists Bass to write him a letter resulting in his ability to re-enter his home and recross the threshold back into society as a free man. In Norma Ray, Norma decides to renounce the abusive men and systems in her life and trust Reuben by entering his room while unknowingly crossing a threshold into active resistance. In Safe, Todd Haynes preserves this tradition. Carol is seen crossing through doors, hallways, and rooms in ways that emphasize her separation and distance from the world around her. The motif of door and threshold is a metaphor for Carol's move from a life of domestic unhappiness and loneliness into one of acceptance and community. For example, in the scene where Carol and her family are eating dinner, we see her begin to cross a threshold that will eventually separate her from the oppressive dynamics they represent. Having been dismissed by her son after commenting on the gory nature of his school paper. Good job, Roar. Why does it have to be so gory? Gory? That's how it really is. God. She excuses herself to get coffee for Greg. You want some coffee? Yeah, I'd love some. And follows the maid into the kitchen. The wall that bisects the room draws a sharp separation across the screen between the men and women. As Carol prepares the coffee, Greg admonishes her coldly for her fruit diet. Stop the fruit diet. Eat less dairy. Well, that's exactly what I said, isn't it? I knew that whole fruit thing didn't make any sense. And the barrier between them allows us to see Carol's reaction unencumbered by the male gaze. Carol physically exemplifies a woman who stands in patriarchal culture tied to her place as a bearer, not maker of meaning. Dad, how do you spell it, Uzi? Just how it sounds, Uzi, I. This scene creates a space in which the architecture of Carol's surroundings vibrate with a palpable sense of anticipation and imminence. The use of frames within frames, doors, windows, beams, crowd the composition to emphasize the inner turmoil pounding against a keen sense of visual confinement. The framing allows Carol to come into focus, but only to enforce her own sense of captivity. As the story progresses, this visual sense of captivity continues as Carol becomes sicker and sicker. From weaving through her garden's narrow pathway at nighttime to literally walking against the status quo at her gym, Carol is increasingly enclosed by her environment. This leads to an increase in her panic attacks, which culminate in a seizure that lands her in the hospital where she sees a commercial for Renwood, the chemical-free commune she will end up at. Once at Renwood, she will leave her family life behind and be faced with the prospect of stepping across a threshold and into a new world. Shortly thereafter, it becomes clear that Carol will in fact cross that threshold, especially in the scene where we see Carol walking up to a cabin made out of huge windows. These windows allow anyone to see what is happening in there at any given moment. The shot stays wide and tracks her walk up to the door and eventually cross the threshold of it. She walks into the middle of the cabin and starts to cry. The shot stays wide the entire time while she is crying, making her seem small. This symbolizes the loneliness she feels even though she was just surrounded by people. She is new to this community and starts to cry because she is leaving behind her past and her family. Her crossing this threshold to mourn her old life can be interpreted as her trying to go back to how her life was while also staying in the community. She finds herself in a liminal situation, a not quite here but also a not quite there configuration, 
and in betweenness of sorts, she's not quite ready to give up her old life. After some time passes, someone from the community comes to check on her. The woman ends up entering the cabin and going to comfort her. When she goes to help Carol, the shot becomes a medium close-up of them, signifying that she is no longer alone and separated from everyone else. This is the very first time that we see someone cross a threshold to join her. In the past, she is always the one to go to the other person. This interaction shows Carol that the people in the community accept her and think of her as one of them. This is something that she has not felt until this moment. This scene finalizes her crossing the threshold of her past to her future. This threshold is made up of two sides as it simultaneously connects and separates two parts of her life. She is connecting with the community while separating from her family. After this scene, there are fewer and fewer shots of her crossing the threshold and of her in wide shots. This signifies that she is accepting her place in the community and feels content with where she is. In the final scene, Carol crosses one last threshold and learns to embrace herself as an individual in the process. After her birthday celebration, an event where she is truly celebrated for the first time, she enters her new safe room alone, despite the suggestion of Chris's desire to join her. Once she enters her room, she's seen breathing from her oxygen tank before catching sight of herself in the mirror and putting the mask down. What follows as she leaves her crutch behind to look at herself in the mirror is the completion of her crossing into a world of self-love and affirmation. We get the sense that Carol has reached a point of no return, and that although she may not find total happiness at the commune, she will never inhabit her previous roles again. The theme of crossing a threshold to transform is oftentimes supported by stylistic choices. In the first half, Haynes uses wide-angle shots and places barriers between Carol and the camera that make it seem as if she is alienated from everybody, including us, the audience. Slow dolly zooms coincide with her panic attacks to increase the sense of claustrophobia that is plaguing her and will ultimately drive her to leave. In the second half, these stylistic choices fade out as her sense of belonging increases within the commune and within herself. Ultimately, Safe paints the picture of a woman who finds greater comfort and security in humble spaces than those of wealth and privilege in her suburban life. In order to realize this, she crosses many thresholds, both literal and symbolic, to take the first step into a world of self-acceptance. Crossing Thresholds in Safe by Lainey and Iona. Kind friends all gather round, there's something I would say that brings us together here, has blessed us all today.